-hmm. medication i don't play about that i do not play about medication Mm -hmm. one people don't understand is that just like everything else you withdraw from medication but the withdrawal from medication if you don't take it is your emotional Mm well-being so if i don't take my medication i can't function pretty much i'm depressed i am so another thing that is a symptom of of bipolar is poor judgment. So you'll see somebody who's bipolar making poor life decisions. If I don't take my drugs, I will make some stupid decisions. Mm-hmm. So I make sure, I, I will literally wake up at five o'clock in the morning, take my medication and go back to sleep. So when I wake up, I'm like saying. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So how so- long... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, no. I was just going to say, so I'm very much a proponent of medication. If you don't believe in medication, supplements, food, whatever you put in your body affects you. Mm-hmm. So same thing. But you can, yeah, that's all I wanted to say. Mm-hmm. So how long did it take for you when you started taking medications to know, like, this working for me? Like you said, you you would take your medication and go to sleep. Like, was that a long process and trying to figure out, like... That is a good question. Let me tell you something. Mm. I took Lexapro at first, and I'm not saying uh, don't take Lexapro. I'm mm. saying find out what works for you, because it did not work for me. Lexapro made me so depressed. One time, I, my mama had to come over and, um, before I had my hair locked up, brush my hair for me to go to work. I could not even move. I was like so zombied out. It took mm-hmm. my whole my whole like personality away. Mm-hmm. Then I got on Paxil. Paxil was hilarious. I'm still on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's an antidepressant. Paxil was hilarious because when I first got on it, I was like, I want to wash the dishes. I want to do this. And I'll be like super happy about it. And my mom told my brother, she was like, I think she's going to kill us because she was, <laughs> because I was just so happy about everything. And eventually, like when you get on that good medication that works for you, you smooth out. There's like at first there's like a peak of like it's uh, efficacy where it works really, really well. And it's like overworking. And then after that, it like smooths out. Your body gets used to it. So I'm not... I want to wash the dishes. I want to do laundry, mm-hmm. like super excited about doing chores, but I can get them done, which before I barely could. Mm-hmm. Um, but to answer your question, it took, it took like six months before we could find oh. a good, that was just the mood stabilizer and the antidepressant. Remember the ADHD medication came later. Mm-hmm. So I both say, six months for that and then for when did I start taking probably like three more years when I got on ADHD medication Mm -hmm. so and then there was a shortage so I used to be on Adderall Mm -hmm. but there kept being a shortage so imagine you could do everything in the world and then the pharmacist like we don't have it and then you can't do nothing oh wow so what happened what happened so that it, there's a shortage because um, there's only one supplier mm-hmm. of Adderall. And I don't know. I don't know what happened during the pandemic, but we all figured out something's wrong with us in the way. Mm-hmm. But every, everybody <laughs> got diagnosed. With <laughs> everybody got diagnosed with something during the pandemic. Like that's that's when I figured out that I had more than just bipolar it was during the pandemic. Um, but there was a shortage. And so, and there still are shortages sometimes of Adderall, but I'm on Ritalin now because I cannot keep going back and forth like that. Mm. Um, so it would be like, I got on Adderall, clean up my house, deep clean my house, uh, <laughs> do a whole <laughs> bunch of freelancing projects, all this stuff. And then they'd be like, it's a shortage. And they'd be gone for like two, three weeks. Mm. And I'm just down in Red Bulls and trying to get as much caffeine in me as possible, like an unhealthy amount until then. But it's I'm crashing every day, every day, every day. And it's just dark and I can't do as much. And then it would then they would be available again. Mm. And I told my doctor, like, we got to figure something out. So yeah. we switched to Ritalin, which is not as effective, but it's more, um, I'll say smoother. Like it's a delayed release. Mm-hmm. So it's not... I'm not just super hyper in the beginning of the day and then crashing. Yeah. Wow. Well, we have some people that's live. Uh, one person said, uh, Mad Max says, uh, this will help me in understanding 
and understanding people who I currently know is on medication. Thank you for sharing uh, a bit of your story. How do you experience social interactions and have you developed unique coping mechanisms for social challenges? Okay, so this is an interesting question because um, my family and friends will tell me that everybody likes me and people don't realize that when I get home, mm -hmm. I have to decompress so much from social interaction. I'm so exhausted mm -hmm. when I interact. So when I'm having a social interaction, like I said, I have to remember to look at people in their eyes. I have mm -hmm. to remember to... Um, to not cut you off. I have to remember to listen to what you're talking about because <laughs> ADHD, you'll say something, um, you'll say the weather outside is sunny and they'll be like, sunny. Oh, I, and then I'll be like, oh, Stevie Wonder has a song saying sunny. Did you see on Facebook how they said he died the other day? You know, I was about to cry. Like, I, it'll just go like. Yeah, the rabbit everywhere. trails. Yes, except for what the thing. And then I have to remind come back to the conversation like <laughs> so my social interactions I can socialize yes am I good at it yes but there's also a thing called masking that neurodivergent people do so what masking is is you're mimicking what neurotypical people do and it's basically a way to survive masking is code switching for people who are neurodivergent that's what masking is okay. so you might have your little weird stuff little weird quirks that you do because you're neurodivergent like eye contact so I might be counting how many how many seconds you're looking me in the eye so that lets me know how many seconds to look you in the eye you might pause you might laugh I might pause to let you laugh like and I'm thinking of these things mechanically yeah. while I'm trying to seem normal outwardly that's what masking is. And I know that sounds crazy. That's why I'd be exhausted after the social interactions. Because my brain has been moving so fast, mm -hmm. trying to keep up being normal yeah. while you're talking. And that does not mean I'm not interested in what you're saying. My brain just wants to be everywhere at once all the time. Yeah. So socially interacting is like... Sometimes I hate it because I'm like, this is going to take so much energy, even if it's something I want to do. Mm -hmm. Like um, the um, I live downtown Oakland. So it, like all the parades and stuff happen over here. Mm -hmm. So the pride parade was over here the other day. The brat was down the street. Mm -hmm. so me and my boyfriend went for like an hour. And that was cool. And then, um, then we had a drink. I was so happy. Because I was like, yes, you're going to get sleepy. Let's go home. <laughs> was I having fun? Yes. Mm -hmm. But I don't care. I'd rather be in my house. I always rather be at my house. Then you could say that Beyonce is down the street giving away money. I'm going to go for five seconds. Say, hi, Beyonce. Give my money. Snatch. Go home and take a nap. Because that five seconds took so much energy to get out the bed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ready to go see Beyonce. Actually, I'll go for 10 seconds for Beyonce. <laughs> So, yeah, I can socially interact. Um, I think being in our community, we don't have a choice. Like, we we are just now having the neurodivergent conversations. Like, uh, white boys been beginning to be autistic their whole lives. We haven't had that. And then I was raised in church. So mm -hmm. there's also the thing of knowing how to speak, having manners, all these things that are instilled in you that is not like you don't yeah, you don't not speak to people you don't not look them in the eyes you don't not say you sir ma'am all those things so even when i knew when i was younger that i was different mm -hmm. i still had to perform social interactions the way that i was told i had to yeah it just was i just needed a nap after mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's that's interesting because you talk about the eye contact and I was asking one of my guests last week, mm. um, do you think the eye contact have anything? And this is just me speculating. This is And ask whatever you want. It's not going to hurt my feelings because I didn't hurt everything. <laughs> no, yeah. I, I appreciate that. But I was wondering if that had to do anything with like our phone usage. Do you I think it makes it worse? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You know, because you know what's made my ADHD worse, but not worse, but. Mm -hmm. This app is made for me, and I don't think that it's helping neurotypical people. TikTok. TikTok is made for me because...